Welcome to the TargetFlow GPS Distributed Training. GPS is TargetFlow's online booster station configuration and pricing tool. The purpose of the tool is to provide our distributors with the ability to quickly quote potable water booster systems. While we've captured about 75% of typical stations in this offering, some designs and specifications require an experienced application engineer. Please feel to contact our sales department for any application. In this training, you will learn to create customers, create a quote, configure a pump station, and GPS will refer to this uh, to a uh, station as an item. Learn the difference between your default quote, or as we call it, the desktop quote, and a job quote. Copy a pump Select new customer from the bottom left hand side of your home screen. <coughs> Most reps find it practical to create a generic customer called the bidding contractor as opposed to creating a new entry for a customer they will most likely not use again. The choice is up to you and your organization. We'll enter in bidding contractor under company. Under location you're going to put in your city dash and uh, two digit state initials Intel Equip uses this uh, combination of this location and the company uh, to identify this uh, unique customer under market sector we're going to select plumbing <clears throat> notice that the recalculate button has appeared in the upper right hand side of the screen We'll select that, and now we've finished filling out all of the uh, mandatory fields for a new customer. Uh, I strongly suggest that for normal customers you fill out all the fields, uh, but for our bidding contractor this is sufficient for our needs. Select Actions and Save. We now see that the bidding contractor dash Dallas, Texas has been created. ID number is 20114. Uh, you'll be using this number very often, so it's good to write it down, put on a sticky pad on your uh, monitor, or memorize it. Create a quote. From the home screen, select New Quote in the upper left hand side. Under quote status, we're going to select uh, quoted. If this quote is going to be completed and sent out the same day, uh, if you're still waiting on some information from the customer and this uh, this quote isn't going to go out for a few days, uh, then you would select um, quote in process. After you've received confirmation of that information uh, and send out the quote to the customer, you can change its status to quoted. Uh, we'll see later on uh, when we review the quote manager why the, the status is important. Under quote type, uh, you select budget or firm. Down below that, we're going to select whether or not this is a domestic or export uh, station. Uh, please note that, the, that at this point, we, we don't have any 50 hertz curves uh, available. Uh, if you do need a 50 hertz system uh, quoted, please contact one of our uh, application engineers. Comments isn't a required field, but it's a great place uh, to store uh, job notes, uh, whether it's special shipping instructions or if you create any revisions in here. Uh, when I create a revision, typically what I like to do is put in my initials, the date, and the revision. This is a great tool uh, for you uh, to store your notes in or if one of your co-workers has to access one of your quotes and uh, process it for you. <clears throat> Under customer and end user, we're going to enter in uh, the bidding contractor's ID number we just created. This auto-populates uh, all of the rest of the uh, customer information. Project name is a requirement.
Under quotation lead time, we have an anticipated order date. <coughs> If you know, uh, if you have an approximate date when the station is going to bid, enter that. If you don't, uh, indicate a date that is one year out from the current date, approximately. Uh, this is an indication to us that uh, that no date is known. Uh, it's the flag that we use internally. Market sector will choose plumbing. This is the default for most stations. Occasionally, you will select municipal industrial if it truly is that type of application. The fire, HVAC, and irrigation systems uh, uh, categories are for future use with, uh, with stations that are configured for those applications. Under probability, if you have a, a fair idea of what the probability of uh, receiving this job uh, uh, what, what that's going to be, enter in that value. Uh, if you don't, simply enter in your typical hit rate for your company. So let's assume you're getting 20% of all the stations you bid on. Okay. Select recalculate. And we now hit save. And the quote has been created. configure a pump station. From our quote, we'll go up to item actions, new item select pump. This brings us to the dialog box which prom pom prompts us for the operating conditions for the station. So uh, for this example, we'll enter in a, a system flow rate of 300 GPM discharge pressure of about 90 PSI and we're going to select a boost suction uh, system suction type. We have three options for six system suction type. Uh, the first is flooded and that makes the assumption that we're drawing from an, an adjacent tank and our minimum suction pressure is going to be set to zero, i.e. The, the water level can drop down to the uh, suction manifold. Uh, a boost application where our water supply is coming from city water source and it's pressurized, we have some validation in here that will uh, will flag the system if our suction pressure drops below or is indicated as being less than 20 PSI. Uh, it'll force you to call the factory to confirm that's really true. And then we have suction lift where we're drawing from uh, an adjacent pond or water source where the water of the level is below the center line of the pump. We don't have any selections or stations designed for this. Suction lift stations are uh, traditionally very difficult to design for well unless you have all of the information. Uh, if you have a suction lift station, please contact one of our application engineers for assistance. So in our example, we're going to choose a boost application. We have a 30 PSI minimum suction pressure. 30 PSI maximum suction pressure. Uh, our station is going to be duplex, which is going to be two pumps, evenly split uh, for flow rate. We could have also chosen a duplex with each pump handling 100% of the flow, one of the pumps standby, uh, triplex zero standby, or triplex 50% with one standby. Quadplexes uh, are a future product that we're going to release. Right now we just have a uh, a section blocked out for them. So let's choose duplex 50% per pump, zero standby. Our station incurs about 5 psi of friction losses. That's included in the calculation for differential pressure across the pump. The section down here shows us what the flow rate per pump is, 150 GPM, plus what the differential pressure is going to be. We select next. And we now have a list of product lines which can meet that condition point. For this example, we're going to choose a PACO LC pump and a Grenfoss CR. Select Next. <coughs> Pumps are sorted by efficiency by default. We see that the CR45 2-2 is operating at 72.79% uh, efficiency, giving us a rated horsepower draw of just under 10 horsepower with a max power of 12.43.
Our 1570-5 is running 72 horsepower, but gives us a max horsepower of 9.89. Uh, for this example, we're going to choose the CR45-2-2. This is the pump selection only. We are now ready to go and configure a station based upon this pump. We go up to Configuration, Option Selection Page. and we've been given a partially configured station. The left hand side is a list of the components and sub-assemblies which make up, make up the station. The right hand side are the configuration options we have for the station. By default we have uh, selected, or the system has selected, 208 single phase uh, 60 Hertz as power for the station. Let's change this to 460 and we select recalculate and we now find that we have a, a set of controls which operate at 15 horsepower 460. We can choose between the Eaton Redline controller and we can select our uh, building automation systems communication protocols. Please note that if you select the BACnet, uh, BACnet protocol, you are required to select a Red Lion uh, control, controller. Okay. Let's select the tank for this. In the tank section, we do have some validation. If the shutoff pressure of the station exceeds the pressure rating of the tank, the tank will not appear in this list. and we can choose the location of the tank. Is it going to be mounted adjacent to the system? In which case the discharge cap you see as the last item in our configuration on the left hand side will change to a cap with a tank feed. If it's remote mounted no tank feed will be supplied. So we chose adjacent and we see that our, our discharge cap has now changed. Uh, we have now configured our pump station. Let's go to General Arrangement. And we have an 8.5 by 11 printout of the station. We can get a full size uh, 11 by 17 PDF document when we go to Quote Documents. So let's do that. Select Save, Save As. We're going to save this as item number one under the quote we just created and after save we're going to navigate to our quote documents. In the left hand pane under item number one we have all of the documents that are associated with the station. We can select those at any given time. Here's our internal price sheet. customer price sheet. Customer price sheet hasn't been set up with any kind of multiplier. The vast majority of our reps uh, have indicated that they're simply taking our information, copying it to their letterhead, and then adding their uh, multiplier. We have a pump curve. Life cycle cost. multi-speed curves, <laughs> and we have a general arrangement drawing. General arrangement drawing uh, in the quote documents view. Gives us a drawing number TF dash zero zero dash zero one four. We're now going to attach the full size eleven by seventeen to this uh, to this quote. We go to attach new document. We go to the TF zero 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 one four directory. From here we can attach 
an Autodesk Exchange format file which opens up in Revit, the full size 11 by 17 PDF, a 3D generic uh, SAT file. It can open up in pretty much uh, any 3D software, SolidWorks, ProE, um, MicroStation, and then we have the AutoCAD uh, 2D views. These views are front, right, left, back, and top. We have a layer system which allows you to turn off and turn on uh, tank feed uh, caps at either end of the manifolds. So for example, we're going to attach the 11 by 17 PDF, select the radio button, scroll down to the bottom, and hit attach. If you have additional documents that you want to attach to this quote, you can select Choose File, navigate to them using the File Manager, and attach those as well. Let's select our 11 by 17 file. As you mouse over to the right hand side of the screen, you can save that to your file system. Let's go back to our quote list. Select our booster. And we see we have now, uh, we now have one entry showing the booster and a total for that. At any point in time, you can navigate back to the screen by going to home, and my active workload by status, and selecting the quote under the appropriate section. Learn the difference between the default quote and a job quote. Copy a pump station between our desktop quote and job quote. We're now going to learn the difference between uh, your default quote, which we call the desktop quote, uh, and a job quote. Uh, up until now, we have first created a quote and then selected a station. Uh, we're going to do uh, kind of the opposite now. We're going to select a station or several stations, and then we're going to create a quote. So uh, to get a better understanding of what your desktop quote is, we're going to go look at it in our uh, <coughs> quote manager. In order to get there, let's uh, select my active workload by status. Uh, in the screen up at the top, I see my default quote, uh, number 8658. Uh, your quote's going to have a different number, but it's a, it's a quote that was automatically created when your account was created. <coughs> Down below that, we see each of the job quotes in the different states. Some of these are in process. Some of these have already been quoted. Your quote numbers will be a three-letter prefix, uh, which has been assigned to your rep firm, followed by a sequentially assigned number. Uh, let's go into uh, my default quote here so you can kind of see the contents. In my desktop, or in my default quote, I have 23 different stations uh, selected. I was probably doing some uh, validation testing here to make sure that these all resulted in valid stations. Now uh, let's go to, uh, to our home screen and we're going to select a, a couple of iterations. We're going to save them there so we can do a comparison. Let's put in a quick condition point, 200 GPM, <coughs> at 80 PSI, 20 PSI suction, duplex station, and next. Let's choose the Ghouls ESV, CR, and EMVU. Uh, up at the top, I have a uh, CR15-4. Uh, rated horsepower is just about 7 horsepower with max is 7.22. Let's select this one as our first station. Option selection page. We're going to make a, an assumption that all of the uh, options here are what we want for the station. So we have a duplex station with 7.5 horsepower Grenfoss pumps uh, for a total cost of $13,000. Uh, we can go to general arrangement to look at the drawing and save there, or we can simply hit save. 
and this will be saved out to that default quote. Okay, let's go home. It's going to prompt us to save again. Hit yes. Let's go back to conditions of service. We're going to put in the same condition points. We're simply going to choose a different pump. This time we're going to choose the Ghouls 22SV-3. Again, we'll leave the, uh, the default uh, options here so we get a, an apples to apples comparison. We have a sell price of uh, 12460 for this particular iteration. Let's hit save again. Go home and let's try a third iteration. See if we can find an EVMU pump which will meet the condition point. Let's choose this one here. It's a little bit closer to our curve. Again, same options, and let's hit save. Okay. And now we're going to navigate to our quote manager instead of our home screen. Save so your work, yes. <clears throat> okay. And we see that we now have uh, three new systems uh, listed. We have the uh, CR15-4, the uh, 22SV, and the EVMU, and we have a comparison of all three prices. It looks like our uh, Ghoul's Pump is going to be our cheapest one. Okay, So let's go over, create a new quote, and let's copy this, this uh, pump station over to it. Go to Quote Actions, New Quote. I'm going to fill this out just like we did before. And the consumption we're going to send this quote out today, so set it to quoted. Firm. Domestic. And cheapest of the bunch. It's our default bidding contractor. Their project name is, let's call this Le Quinta Hot Tub Booster. It's a very large hot tub. Anticipate, anticipated order date. This customer leaves their hot tub, so it's going to be next week. Market sector is plumbing and probability 100%. Let's save this. We now have a brand new clean quote. Quote number is 1500102. Let's go to our quote list. I'm going to open up my default quote. I'm going to select the station that I want to copy over. And I go over to Item Actions and Copy Items. I'm now going to go back to my quote list and open up the quote I just created. When I'm in here, I again go to Item Actions, 
and paste items. I'm going to get this little dialog box that says uh, paste the items as is without updating or paste and update with the latest configuration. That second option is the one we want and we select OK. And we are done. Use the quote manager. All right, let's uh, take a real quick look at the quote manager and look at a couple of the features that uh, that it gives you. Uh, Left-hand menu you have here in the quote links. Uh, we'll all take you to the same quote manager. Uh, they just take you to the uh, the listed default view for any one of these selections. So uh, let's uh, let's try uh, our favorite my active workload by status. And this is going to give me a list of, of all, of, uh, all of my quotes as the user. I can also switch to all open quotes. And it is initially uh, sorted by sales office. This will give me all of the all of the quotes within my organization regardless of the user. I can then group these together by the application engineer. And this will tell me uh, how much any individual salesman has quoted. Another great view is uh, by quoting office. And this gives me the ability to uh, look at jobs that might have been duplicated. So in this example here, we see that uh, both uh, Ignatius and Myrna have both bid a booster to, uh, to Yambu. It's a great tool for, uh, for the salesman and the sales manager to use.